artists and creative technologists. So what is it exactly? An artist? An engineer? A maker? Or an inventor? Or none of these things? Before I dive into my current definition of what I think a creative technologist is, let me rewind to when I first discovered the term creative technology. I was pretty good at math and science growing up, and so my parents encouraged me to study engineering. And as a freshman in college, I decided to do mechanical engineering because I believed that it was the broadest kind of engineering, and I liked to make things and work with my hands. Even though I was also very interested in art and design, I never seriously considering majoring those because I think that it was not practical enough. And then the career path was more ambiguous and maybe not as lucrative. To me, art was on one side and engineering was on the other side. Not until I took a class called Interactive Art and Computational Design that that whole thinking went right out the window. That class led me to believe that not only that art and engineering are not so separate. They are actually very complementary to each other. But Pat, what do you mean? Okay, let me explain. If you think about making art in terms of a tool and an application, this class has taught me that I can use my technical skills to express myself creatively. So just like an artist uses paintbrush to create beautiful paintings, I use code to create beautiful things. And that's the best part of it all. You can use your technical skill set to create anything you want, whatever you can imagine. So now, let me tell you my most recent definition of what I think a creative technologist is. A creative technologist is someone who uses technology as a tool to make something creative. It is quite broad, so let me break it down further. I think of it in terms of three categories, input, process, and output. The input is when you come up with what you want to make. This can come from all sorts of things. Ideas you find interesting, inspiration, problems you face on a daily basis, something you are curious about and want to learn more, questions you want to answer. The world is your oyster. The output is supposed to answer two things. One, in what form do you want the creation to look like? And two, what is the goal of this project? A caveat to the second question though. There doesn't need to be a conventional goal to the project. It can be whatever you want. Don't limit yourself. It doesn't have to be useful. It could be to make people laugh. Or it could be to create some beautiful graphics for you to look in your free time. Or it could be to learn a new way of doing things. Think like a kid. Let your imagination go wild. A couple of years ago, I made an eight step sequencer and I got this comment. What's the point of this? Yes, you heard that right. I made an eight step sequencer. It's not a normal step sequencer. It involves many eggs. Honestly, I couldn't tell you what was the point of the project or what my goal was. Maybe I had many eggs in my fridge. Maybe I wanted to learn what a step sequencer is. But then why not combine both of them? The idea made me laugh and I wanted to see how it would work. So I gave it a try and I made it. And it was interesting and it was great. Now that we have the input and the output covered, let's talk about the process. How do I make this happen? The output already answers what you want this something to look like. Whether it be physical or digital, a software, a tool, whatever it is, now you have to figure out how to make it. Make Google your best friend. You will need some basic programming, but honestly, there are so many free resources out there to help you get started easily and quickly. So don't let anything stop you. Back to the definition. A creative technologist is someone who uses technology as a tool to make something creative. And I use the input, process, and output framework to help me think through how to turn ideas into reality. You might repeat, this is so broad, Pat. And I would have to say, you should be glad it is so broad. This is because you can be inspired by anything in the world. Because you can always find something new and interesting. Because when you're curious, your brain leads you to the next and next and next thing. So let your curiosity be your guide and start making. The world is changing so fast. So instead of waiting for someone to invent something for you, why don't start with an idea and figure out the process, experiment, fail, iterate, learn, and create an output that lives up to your imagination. I hope to inspire you to start thinking, feeding your curiosity, learning new things, building confidence, and putting something creative out into the world. 
I say creative, I didn't say useful. It could be useful if that's the goal, or it may turn out to be useful in the future, but it doesn't have to start with that. You know how they say, focus on the process, not the destination. Whatever the definition of what a creative technologist is, my conclusion is that anyone can be one. Anyone who is curious and has a desire to bring ideas into reality. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.